if you remember, I brought to your attention uh, the different floors in the house. Uh, that was a, a way of thinking about a, d a, dis a, uh, d a description of these different positions. They can be seen as different floors in the house, like we climb the stairway from one floor to another, either in ascent or down in descent. Well, I, I did so. I brought it to your attention using G minor seventh like this, with the fourth finger and the first finger as the bookends for, for the proper fingering transitions. Here's how they, they laid out. These were the inversions of the same phrase throughout the, in the ranges of the guitar fingerboard. Now I'm going to shift it to a D minor 7th so that I can take the same pattern and show you some of the stairways that connect them. In other words, this one up here against a D minor 7th, the next one would be here. To get from this one in, on this stairway or on this floor of the house to this floor of the house, Many players use different um, devices. Some use uh, perfect fourths, chromaticism, major seconds, uh, pentatonics. These are all uh, variables that are constantly in, in motion and constantly changing in and out. So you can never tell what a, player's, a good player is going to do next. But in this particular case, one of the most fluent forms that I take advantage of is the chromaticism. And I consider them a stairway of minor seconds, just like you see from the second floor to the first floor. And so to get from this floor to this floor, and the inversion would be on this top one, would be in this area. And on this one here, it would be on this area. So. This is how it feels. You see what I did? I did this. But I didn't then I moved it out like this. And there it was again. So again. That's another change. And there's the chromaticism or the stairway. From the beginning again. And even here. So there are many ways of coupling these different uh, areas of the, the instrument. And I think that one of the most important things when it comes to fluency is not to have a favorite confined area of the instrument. When any form or any chord comes up for improvisation that forces you into that area alone, the entire fingerboard has to elusively uh, in become invisible in terms of what it is going to function, how it's going to function for you. So it's invisible because no matter what, it, what comes up, that's what it turns into at a moment's notice. The entire fingerboard becomes the topic of what you want to express. And you're, you're, it becomes a blank canvas each time you want to create a, a, a figure.